Ya. Welcome back to the interview area. We are joined by our defending champion, Wyndham Clark. Wyndham, I know you were here about a month ago, and then you played a few holes today. What's the biggest difference you're seeing in the golf course? Uh, well, in a month, the course has changed quite a bit. Um, the greens are extremely fast and penal. And, you know, you hit it on the green, and you're still, the hole's not done. I mean, you, uh, I was just amazed how fast the greens are. Um, but the course, the course is in great shape. It was, uh, it was very fun and delightful to be out there on the back nine today. Obviously a big week for you, first time defending a major championship. What's your mindset? You know, I haven't, uh, I haven't been playing my best golf, and uh, it's been kind of a tough stretch these last few weeks. And so really I'm just trying to get, gain some momentum this week for the rest of the season. Um, I know that maybe sounds like low expectations for the week, but honestly, I'd love to just gain some momentum and, you know, I'd really like to see some good, hit some good shots, get some, you know, have some really good up and downs, make some key putts throughout the week and play four solid rounds. So, you know, I'd love to just, that, that's really what I'd love to do. We're going to hear on the right to Brentley. What's, what's kept you from playing your best golf these last few weeks? And I guess what, what level of frustration have you reached kind of in the lead up to this? I mean, I don't really, it's been a little, um, you know, it's been, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, you look at the stats and things look bad, but yet in practice it's good. And so it's been really uh, puzzling to me because I've hit, I'll hit great shots or I'll play 13 really good holes, but I'm not getting much out of them. And then I have kind of four or five not so good holes and I end up shooting one or two over and I do that two rounds and you miss a cut. Um, so that's, that's been really frustrating. And yeah, my frustration level is definitely higher than it's been in, in a long time. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a bummer, but, but you know, it's uh, the great thing about golf is there's always another week. And I got to believe that good golf is around the corner and I'm hitting a lot of good shots in practice. So I just, I got to be able to take it to the course and I'm hoping it's this week and it starts a good run of playing good golf the rest of the year. Here on the left, Gary. Yeah, Wyndham, expectations, do you think that word is an overrated talking point for, for people who cover the game? Because we don't know what your expectations are. We don't know what they were a year ago. Is it, is it a fair talking point for somebody who's in a different place now than you were a year ago? I mean, I would just say my expectations are probably higher than anyone else has for me in this room. Um, so I've, I have to work on my expectations and, um, you know, more of just not putting so much pressure on myself. Um, it is tough. I mean, it's, it's obviously challenging being one of the top players and especially doing it as quickly as I did. Um, you know, there's ebbs and flows in the game of golf and, you know, guys like Scotty right now are making it look really easy, but there's a lot of other guys that, you know, struggle a lot of the weeks of the year and play good maybe just a few events so it's uh it's definitely a challenge and it's it's obviously frustrating for me that i'm not as consistent right now and um you know yeah i mean i'm just i've been kind of bummed as of late just with my game but but you know i'm always reminded when i get on these practice tees and and i play practice rounds and i hit good shots and i'm still doing a lot of good things in practice um makes me feel feel like I'm not far. It's just, it's just bringing it to competition. Stay here on the left. Hi, thank you. Uh, Danny Funt with the Washington Post. Uh, there's been a lot of talk these past few weeks about the pressures of life on tour and the toll it can take from a mental health perspective. I was just hoping for your thoughts on how difficult it can be to adjust to those pressures and whether you think there's enough resources for players who are dealing with or struggling with that for whatever the case may be. Yeah, I mean, I, I assume you're alluding to some recent events. Um, you know, that's obviously a very sad um, and tragic situation that happened. And, you know, the unfortunate thing for what we do is it's so lonely and it's very difficult. And too often, I think players, including myself, 
get tied up so much in score and outcome. And the game of golf is so frustrating and so hard. And there are those really lonely times when you miss a cut and you throw your clubs in the in the car and you drive off and you're very pissed off. Um, so yeah, I mean that's it's obviously on TV they typically show the guys playing great and the game seems awesome, but um, you know in reality I'd say 80% of the field storms off pretty pissed off after a lot of the rounds. So that's just the nature of our game and that's why it is such a mental game and as I've played it more and more I've learned that you know there's a, so many different skill levels out here and the difference between I think the guys that really make it and enjoy the game and have a long career they just are better mentally than everyone um, and then as far as um, you know the amount of help and and stuff that guys have, have out here I mean we have unlimited resources to be honest um, I just think it's more of maybe the caddies and the players maybe checking in on each player and being like, hey, man, how you doing? Not just how you playing golf, like how you doing handling that stuff. That's maybe more on the players to take initiative to do that. Um, because it is, like I said, it's lonely. And I've been in many low spots where, you know, you have some negative thoughts, which are, um, you know, you don't ever want to have. But that's golf. Golf can do that to you, and you got to do your best to not let it do that. We're gonna stay on the left, Maddie. Yeah, hi, Wyndham. Um, hi. Everyone's talking about the greens, them being very fast, very challenging. Is there anything that you are focusing on in particular or a drill that you like to use to get used to um, the speed and the undulation of the green? Yeah, I mean, they are extremely fast. If they get any firmer and faster, I, the greens would, I mean, they would be borderline and they already are borderline, so. Uh, but yeah, as far as practicing, I mean, the biggest thing is where you leave yourself um, on the greens. And so, you know, I, today I went with my caddy and we just were really charting to certain pins like we'd rather be here than there. And sometimes that almost could mean not that you're tra ever trying to miss a green, but you're airing towards the easier up and down. And then, I mean, you got to play a lot of break on these greens. Um, and so when we're hitting lag putts and even short putts, you know, you have a 10 footer downhill, down grain, and, and you know, normally you're not more than four or five inches outside the cup on nor most greens. And here you're maybe playing 10 to 12 inches just so that you're, you're not getting below the hole and haven't run away. So it's really a lot of practice and that's gonna be what we're gonna focus on a lot. Um, you know, we did today and these next few days to get ready. Yeah, and you mentioned the grain. Um, how much do you think the grain will impact some of these putts for you? Is there like a you know, percentage that you like to play to, or I heard them talk about how much they were cutting the grain, so it kind of took some of that grain out of it. Yeah, I mean, the grain, I don't know if it affects the, um, maybe the break of the putts as much on these greens, because they are cut so tight that the grain's not grabbing it. It's more the speed. So when it looks really shiny and it's down grain, you know, let's say the greens are 13 right now, I think down grain they're 15 or 16. They're like significantly faster, and then into the grain, um, it's not t it's not affecting it that much. So it goes from a 13 on the stem to maybe only a 12 in my mind. So every putt is fast, and I've found myself hitting uphill putts six feet by, and then hitting downhill putts six seven feet by. So um, and it was a common theme in in our group. I mean, multiple guys put it off the green, multiple guys hit putts. They're like, oh my gosh. Um, so it's it's definitely the defense right now is the greens. Back to Brentley on the right. Um, during these past few weeks, is there anything that you've done to kind of unplug to get away? I mean, I know you like to fish and things like that. Have you had any of that time to kind of reset and get away from golf for a little bit? Yeah, I, I didn't touch the clubs for um, right before Memorial. I, I took one week where I didn't touch the clubs and then practice all the next week. But, no, I ha unfortunately haven't fished. Um, after Travelers, I'm doing two or three fishing days, and so I'm really hoping that – uh, is a great release and escape from golf. Where at? Uh, most likely Colorado. I'll go home. And then, and then secondly, last year you talked about kind of your goal, like the goal Julie had for you. Like, I guess it was like three things, like have fun or something like that. What's your goal or what's the motto this week? We haven't, uh, we haven't gotten there. We're meeting probably today to work on those. So maybe I'll let you know when we have those. Perfect. Anything else from Wyndham? Thank you, Wyndham. Best of luck yeah. this week. Thanks, guys.